Howdy, g'day to our online family. Oh, you are in a tree today. We have our You're friend and fellow treat. church planter. You're in a tree. <laughs> You're in for a tree. For a tree. You're not in That's a tree. What we're Hopefully, you, well, you might be watching, joining in today from a tree. <laughs> oh my goodness, Donald. <laughs> but our fellow friend and church planter, Pastor Emma, is bringing the word today. And so we want to invite you to lean in as uh, we get to hear from her and what God has for us today. Did you know that Echo could be your place, your people, and your purpose? Only one space. It's so beautiful. Do us a favor. Let us know where you're watching from. Comment below and press the like button. Even if you're in a tree. And today we want to encourage you as you take your first steps in this life-giving local church yep. to be able to find community and the support that you have been hoping for. And so we want to invite you to stop by Mayo High School for one of our services, whether that's 9.30 or 11 a.m. on Sundays. We would love to meet you here. Yes, and we also want to say thank you for your obedience to God's word in the form of giving back to God through the giving of your tithe, which if you didn't know, is 10% of your income as a worship to God, as worship to God. If you are looking to give, head to our website or text any amount to 84321 and enjoy the rest of our online Sunday service, service today.
battle truly belongs to the king this morning. Come on.
echo is a house of miracles. We proclaim that this morning, Jesus. from God. 
Amen. So my name is Pastor Christy. I'm one of the co-lead pastors here. I have the honor and privilege of leading this beautiful community with my husband, Andy. And we, oh, thank you, Andy. Randy's back. Mustaches are everywhere. And he has attitude. But we love leading this community. And I just got to say, last night, before I introduce our guest speaker, last night was so special. We had our very first Lady League. Who was there? I see some beautiful women in the room that were there. And it was our kickoff event for our Echo Church women's ministry, and it was such a joy. I was a ball of emotions and crying on the way up, but we could not have done it without the generosity of this church and just people serving with joy. And we had a lot of guests come for the very first time. And so I just want to say thank you for serving. Thank you for loving this community. Thanks for getting behind this vision that God's given me to just embrace women in this city, to lead them to the Lord, and to have a good time while we're doing it. Amen? All right, so without further ado, one of my dear friends is here speaking. She spoke last night. She lives out in Seattle, Washington. Anyone been to Seattle? Anyone like Seattle? Let's give her some love. Thank you. But you're going to love Emma, okay? She's Australian. She and her husband, Drew, planted their church almost two years ago. During the pandemic, they moved from San Diego to Seattle. Hello. They have three kids. She is a force to be reckoned with. And my husband and I met Emma and her husband, Drew, two and a half years ago, right before the pandemic started. We were at a round table, and we were there to be coaches to new, new pastor, or pastors that were starting new churches. And we had the gift of having Drew and Emma at our table, and it was an immediate connection, and we, knew each, we liked each other right away. But what I'm here to say is that she has been a champion of Andy and I, her and Drew, and the friendship. And just honestly walking alongside this road and even what we talked about yesterday of just being scattered no more. And I am not scattered in my life because of people like Emma. She speaks truth. She is prophetic. For those of you that don't know what prophetic means, it means she hears from God and she shares the message that God has given her. And so I would just love it if Echo Church, you can stand up on your feet and let's honor Pastor Emma Davies to the stage. Hello, hello. Good morning, Echo Church. How we doing? Happy Sunday. Oh my goodness, what a treat it is to be with you. I'm officially a fan of the Midwest. I don't know if I'm going to go home today. I might be staying forever, but alas, I will not be because as Pastor Christy told you, she is correct. I am married to a very handsome man, Drew Davies, and these are my three kids. I think we're going to have... Um, a picture up. There we go. Look at that. My, I've got a nine-year-old, Georgia. This kid, I mean, he has the vibes of all vibes. This seven-year-old, Jack, and then my little COVID baby, Bennett Brave, because I figured if you're going to be born in 2021, I'm going to make your middle name Brave, because you might need it <laughs> for this world that you're coming into. But that's my little family, and uh, Pastor Christy is, is right in what she's saying. And I, hey, come on, give Seattle some love. All right, we need some love up there. We don't have enough. We need to take some of yours. But you know what? I love my city, and I hope you love your city too. And our story is a crazy one. Um, Definitely a God idea to move from the sunniest place in America to the rainiest place. But who knows when you say yes to God, you are never left disappointed. It has been a wild adventure the last two years. Um, Seattle is a little crazy. The news might tell you that. But you know what? In the darkest times, we get to be the brightest lights. And it has been that. And it's been so cool to see God adding week after week to the testimonies that are part of our church's story. Now, before I go on and on about our church, the reason I'm even telling you about it, because it actually has something to do with you. I promise I'm not just up here talking about me. I'm actually talking about you when I'm talking about our story. Why is that? Because did you know Echo Church, that right before we'd even started our journey, your incredible pastors chose to sow financially uh, from Echo Church into our soil. And that was significant. I mean, it's significant every time somebody chooses to to sow into something that you're passionate about and, and a call of God in your life. But at that time, like we had three people meeting in my living room and I'm like, oh, I don't know, God, if this is gonna work. But when you have incredible people like the Cassas that don't just say that you can do it, but actually wanna give seed to seeing it happen, it meant so much. So I want you to know this. If you're a giver in this house, Echo Church, know that you have sown into a field in Seattle and there is people right now in service that are getting transformed by the power of God because of the seed you sowed. 
Is that an incredible thing? I think that's incredible. And if it's not incredible to you, then you need to listen to this message because we're going to get into that today. But yes, yeah, so glad to be here. I can't honour your pastors enough. What magnificent people they are. You know, one of the things I love being a guest in someone's home is that I can make sure that the people in that home know just how amazing the mum and dad of the house are. Something, if you're, if you're new to Australians, and it's my favourite thing about being Australian, is that we're not having to be nice all the time. Like, you know, like if you're a Midwestern, they expect you to be nice. No one expects Australians to be nice. So I have license right here. So you know when an Australian says a nice thing, they must mean it. And I've got to tell you, your pastors are amazing and magnificent. And I'm telling you, they are leaders worth following. So give your pastors some honour. And Pastor Christy, last night launching Lady League was phenomenal. History was being made. Can I tell you, it was so much more than a gathering in the natural. What it was, it was a, 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 literally a rallying of troops of an army that's going to march the city into a different place of harvest because of what took place last night. I'm telling you, there was an exchange between heaven and earth last night as women got on mission for the for this city and it was so fun to be a part of it. So if you were there, ladies, those 60 ladies that came for the first time weren't there by accident. So well done you for being the invitation and getting ladies there. I'm telling you, it is just the beginning. All right, so I'm sitting there last night under that tent, or standing actually, and i um, I'm, you know, worshipping, and I really felt the Lord speak to me, something really specific that I was meant to bring this morning. And uh, I, like Pastor Christy said, I do feel that, um, especially in the last two years, I've learnt how to hear the voice of God. And if you haven't learnt how to do that yet, can I really encourage you, be unrelentless till you know that you know that you can hear the voice of God. It has gone so well with me as, as a wife, as a mother, as a pastor, but just as a general human on this planet, being able to hear the voice of God above anything else. So I'm standing there in worship. I felt God give me a, what is called a prophetic word for the church. So that means it's for you corporately, but it's going to translate probably to many individuals in here. So I'm standing there and I want to give you this word before we get into uh, the meat of today. And the word for the church is this, and I shared it with the 9 a.m. and I want to share it with you here at 9.30 a.m. That this is going to be a summer, Echo Church, of significance for you. This is going to be the summer of 2022, a significant summer for Echo Church and its people. And I heard that, and, I, and if you ever have God speak, just take a minute and like God explain a little bit more. And this is what he said to me, that this is going to be manifest in the church in several different ways. The first way is that people are going to come into alignment with the Holy Spirit that hadn't been in alignment with him before. Now, don't mishear me. I don't think there's a lot of people in here that like hate the Holy Spirit and now all of a sudden they're going to love him. I think it's more likely that there's people that have appreciated the Holy Spirit, maybe cognitively understood the Holy Spirit, but have never really had the realisation of what the Holy Spirit activated looks like in their life. I'm telling you, this is the summer. This is the summer where people aren't just going to have an appreciation of the Holy Spirit, but they're going to have a reality of that showing up in their life. That's good news. Can I tell you why it's good news? Do you want to know? Good. Hey, we got to, come on. I'm going to preach quicker if you respond. This is why this is good news. Because the Holy Spirit gives us power. And everything that we're called to do in this life, I'm telling you, is done way better with power attached. Without going to the whole scripture, you guys know there was 12 disciples in the Bible and part of what they were called to do is they were meant to go and tell the good news of Jesus to everybody that would hear it. It's the same call you and I have. It's called the Great Commission. But before Jesus sent them out on assignment to do that, it was very interesting. He did something. He made sure that they received the Holy Spirit first. He recognised for a Christian to be able to do what they were meant to do, they're going to need power to activate it. So I think that's a word for some of you today, that for you to do what you know God has called you to do this summer and beyond, it's going to take some alignment with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit gave me a picture that I want to share with you. And the picture is this. Is there some people that in your life, the Christian life has felt like a rowboat experience? It's cool. You're just chilling in your rowboat, but everything's on you. Like how fast you go or how slow you go is dependent on how much effort you put in. It's all on you, all in your strength. And I don't know if you're anything like me. I'm a terrible rowboater, rowboater, rowboat E. I don't know. And, and you're and you're on there and you're going around. And sometimes if you miscalculate, you just end up going in circles. Has anyone done that before? 
And maybe some people relate to that. They just feel like they're going in circles in their Christian life. But can I tell you, God gave me a new picture of what's going to be happening to people that have felt stuck in a rowboat season. God is calling you up and making space for you to be on the yacht, baby, the yacht. Woo woo. Why is a yacht exciting? A, it looks better on Instagram. Hello, come on. But second of all, what's special about a yacht is it's not powered just by man alone. The yacht has something incredible to it. It has sails that at the right time, if those sails go up and a good sailor knows that when the wind is blowing, they know how to hoist up the sails of their life and find the wind. And without doing anything at all, they find themselves propelled forward by the wind that is caught in the sails. Same for you as it's the same for the yacht. This is gonna be the summer and I declare it to be so. You are gonna figure out where the wind of God is blowing and you're just gonna have to lift up your sails and catch it. And through no effort of your own, but through incredible surrender, you're going to find yourself pushed forward into the purposes and plans of God on your life because the wind of God is in your sails. So point number one to this prophetic word I have for you, Echo Church, this is going to be a summer of alignment with the Holy Spirit. Now there's a pretty cool meme out there. And if you haven't seen it, you just look it up. Has anyone seen this lady that goes, Holy Spirit, activate, (laughs) activate. Activate. Come on. Holy Spirit, activate. Cheesy me, but I'm down for it. Come on, it is time to activate the Holy Spirit this summer, Echo Church, and it's going to go well with you. One other thing I'm going to say is that did you know, and I love that Pastor Andy, you ended this last service. We're going to talk a little bit about disappointment today and what can happen with disappointment. But the thing about disappointment is it actually changes the appointment attached to it. It takes you out of appointment. So before we get into that, I actually want to pray for every leader in the house. Before we even get preaching today, I know I'm doing something different. We're going to pray for leaders in this house. So if you're on Echo Team, if you're a table leader, a team leader, some kind of leadership position, I just want you to lift up your hand because this is the word of the Lord for you. And put it up with some expectation, okay? Come on, you're not spectating church today. You came to receive something. This is the word of the Lord for you. God wants to take your um, appointment in this house, the task that you do, and he wants to add anointing to it. When I read the Bible, he never gave anyone something to do without first anointing them to do it. So Father, I just declare over every leader that is putting up their hands, every leader that has that, that hand is attached to a yes, to space that they have made, God, to not just be there for them, but to be there for somebody else. I pray for a Holy Spirit flow to come in them that they've never had before and let them be part of leading this church into the next chapter of Holy Spirit activation. God, I just declare, Lord, Lord, let it quicken to them in ways. Let there be a harvest of Holy Spirit-led testimonies in the life of the leaders in this house. Father, I just thank you, even right now, your Holy Spirit realigning hearts, softening hearts, God making people's filters even on what they get to do in this house, God, where it felt like a burden. I thank you that the, the, that blessing is coming back. You don't have to do what you've been asked to do. You get to, you get to partner with God. So Father, I just thank you, a word from heaven, a summer of significance for the leaders of this house. Amen. Don't worry, we'll get to some fun preacher stories in a minute. You're good. You're good for it. But number two, there's more. Hey, blame God. This is a long intro. He's the one that spoke it, all right? This summer, and this is directly related to number one, that Holy Spirit alignment is coming. Guess what else follows when the Holy Spirit comes? New life. New life. And last night I had the opportunity even this morning to pray for some incredible people. And I found a thread in so many of the prayers that I was praying over people in this church is that God is getting something new to people. And this might be simple, but come on, it's profound and it'll help you. It is very hard to pick up something new while your hands are full of what is old. And I really feel in this, this this is a great encouraging prophetic word, but there's a little bit of a challenge to it. Because this is just an invitation. Every time the word of God goes out, it's an invitation given for us to receive it. And I really feel like attached to alignment in the Holy Spirit is an invitation for people that are feeling like they're stuck in the old to finally put down what isn't serving them so they can pick up something that is gonna serve them in the spirit. New life is coming, Echo Church. Barrenness that's even beyond this house, but in your city is being broken. Come on, something new is gonna be birthed in the city and it's gonna happen in you and then it's gonna happen through you in Jesus' name. I see a picture of people that have been ankle deep in their purpose in God. If you imagine the, the purposes of God like a, like a river or a pool, you've been ankle deep. 
But I see people run into the deep end, baby. I'm all in, I'm all in. And all of a sudden they're immersed in the goodness. They're immersed in the purposes and plans that God has for them and God wants to do through them. Come on, this is your season. I see another picture of people feeling like a burnt out tree, like the, the life has ravaged them. They felt depleted. They felt like they're in a wasteland. Well, guess what? I see God, I see the budding of new life coming coming. I see the rattle of bones coming back to life. Come on, new life is here, Echo Church. My question before I get into it today is, are you ready to say yes to a summer of significance? Because God has it stored up for you. The question is, do you have space to put it somewhere? So new life is coming for the people. The third one, I promise I will get to preaching in a minute, is I really feel like this is going to be a summer where significant seed is going to be sown in the youth of this church. I'm talking about junior highers and I'm talking about high schoolers predominantly, though I believe college kids and your elementary and um, babies will receive this too. But I really think it's specific for your junior and high schoolers. I know you've got camps coming up this summer. And I feel it so clearly that there is going to be things that are going to be seeded on the hearts of your young people that are going to have generational impact. This is the season. Parents in here, pray like you've never prayed before. Leaders in here, come on, fast on behalf of your kids. God is gearing up to do something. We've got to make space for our young people to get a hold of the truth like never before. The world is coming at them. We've got to come at them with the Word of God even more. Come on, don't think that you have to play games with the youth of our city. They need truth like they've never had it before. So listen, if you're a high schooler or a middle schooler, can you stand up? We're going to pray for you right now. And if you're a leader, if you lead these incredible people, stand up. Is Isaiah and Lizzie in here? Isaiah? Okay. Before we go anywhere, Lizzie, I just want to reach my hand out and just pray for you. Father, I pray where she has, Father, stood in her own way. God, that the alignment that's going to come for you, Lizzie, is you surrendering your purpose. It's not, it is about you, but it's not about you. I'm telling you, as you surrender the things that concern you and you even surrender to your own humanity, you're going to find that you're going to have a flow of power that you've ever seen before. God, I thank you for this incredible couple. God, who you just haven't appointed, you've anointed the appointment. God, I just declare, Father, that they are going to feel a fire like they've never had before, God. You're going to give them eyes to see, God. You're going to give them favour in every area of their life. Bless that incredible couple. And then one other kid I want to pray for is you, Mr. Green Shirt. What's your name? Alan? Callan. I know I sound funny. How old are you? Uh, 11. 11. Are your parents here? Oh, okay. I don't know you at all. I want to tell you something about you that you might not know. Did you know you're a worshiper? I was watching you worship. Not in a creepy way, slightly creepy, but not really. <laughs> you're a worshiper. And I really felt God said to tell you this, that you have a spirit of David. Do you know much about David in the Bible? So here's, what did David do? Yeah, he's pretty awesome. But before he defeated Goliath and he did all the things, he worshipped God. He worshipped God. And what I loved about watching you worship, I'm like, there's a kid not doing karaoke. There's a kid that's understanding what he's saying. And I want to tell you, and I'm actually, let's stretch our hands out toward Callan. Kellen, Callan, just go with it. All right, God knows, it doesn't matter. But Father, I just declare that at 11 years old, he's going to feel the call of God on his life. I activate that David spirit that's in him, God. And I thank you, Father, that he is going to be a man who has intimacy with you, God. He's going to be a man of passion. He's going to be a man, God, that is going to help take down the Goliaths of this city, God. God, I thank you, God, that he would feel your spirit so strong, even at a young age. Why don't you put your hands out and receive something from God like this? Yeah, I know it's weird, but it helps, I promise. God, I just thank you that you would even baptize them in the Holy Spirit afresh. And that just means the Holy Spirit coming in you and activating you. Kellen, you're a man of faith. Come on, you're going to be a strong pillar on which the, the church is going to be built on in this city. God, I say yes and amen to every promise on this young man's life. And come on, for every other high schooler or middle schooler, Father, I just thank you right now that there's going to be something unique and something different about what's deposited this summer. There is an incredible... Uh, caliber of youth you have in this church. I've got to tell you, these are significant, significant people. And significant people do significant things for God. So I just thank you for an infusion right now of your Holy Spirit power to do what they're called to do. Bless them, Lord. Bless the youth and high school ministries of this church. In Jesus' name, amen. What did you think about that? Was that kind of weird? A little bit weird? Weird? What did you feel? Tell me, what, what was God doing in your heart? Anything? 
This could go wrong. They say don't work with animal or children, but... I don't know. I don't know. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Pray on it. You know what? You are a man of prayer. Pray on it. Because, you know, at 11, I knew what I was called to do in God, and I'm going to believe the same thing for you. Can I encourage you, parents? Ask your kids a little bit more what God's talking to them. Like, think about your story. I don't know. For those that have been Christians for a while, sometimes I think I give my kids way too much excuse. Like, you're young enough. I'm telling you, the devil's not giving them an excuse. He's coming after them. So we've got to come after them even more in terms of the call and purpose of God on their life. And then one thing I said in the nine that I just want to say here, I actually felt for the Cassas that this is going to be a summer of significant rest for them. They've rested before. They're actually very good at resting. It inspires me. They're wise enough to take vacations. I'm not <laughs> sometimes. Um, honestly, it really, like, I get around, I'm like, yes, Cassas, I'm picking up what you're putting down, as you were saying. Oh, I heard the Midwest thing is I'm smelling what you stepped in. That's what I heard. I was like, all right, that's a little bit more graphic, but okay. <laughs> you do you, Midwest, all right. Significant rest. And I'm telling you, you know what makes a pastor rest more than anything is when their armor bearers around them are doing what they're meant to do. Give your pastors those seasons of rest, knowing that the fight is still going to be able to be won, even when they need a moment to just sit with God and hear from him. Pray for your pastors, Echo Church. It will go well with you. Amen. All right, you ready to get into the message? All right, summer of significance. But here's the thing. I can get up here and preach till I'm blue in the face, but more likely red. I, I'm a little bit more red than blue, I've got to say. I am, I am quite hot up here, but I love preaching in tennis shoes. I can't do this in Seattle, so I'm, I'm here for it. Um, but we're talking about a summer of significance, but the truth is that's not just going to happen because I got up here and said it. There's got to be some things that have got to change in you and in I if we actually really want to have a summer of significance. And I, this is what I know. Significant people do significant things, but there is going to be a trademark of every significant person. And hear what I'm saying. Every person is significant to God. I'm not saying that there's some people that are more significant or less. I'm actually talking about the mindset of significance, where they don't just go through life. They happen to life. You know what I mean? And that's not a personality trait. It's just like, I'm going to get the most out of life and I'm going to leave my mark. When I go to the grave, I'm going to make sure every seed I had in my pocket was sowed. And one trademark I see about people that do significant things is that they are passionate. And I know you guys have been doing a series right now on Rude Jude. And I got to tell you, in those 25 verses that I read, I'm like, Jude is a passionate dude. Like, he may be rude, but I think he wasn't meaning to be rude. His, it's just that his passion was way more amplified than his politeness. Like, he cared way more about getting the truth to people than he did about how they would respond to the truth. I don't know about you, but I read Jude and I'm inspired. Because if I can be honest, sometimes I've let my need to be polite take away from the actual call of God on my life to be passionate. Can I tell you, the world loves nothing more than passion. The most ridiculous humans, and I won't call them out, but some ridiculous humans that have, you know, reality TV shows and all, this, all of that, the only reason people are watching them is because they're passionate. It's amazing what passion will do. A world that's not listening will suddenly stop and listen to people that actually are passionate about what they're saying. So to link the two, how do you have a summer of significance? You have a summer of significance by being passionate. So my question is, are you passionate this morning? Just to kick us off. What are you passionate about? Now, I talked about my kids just before. I need to tell you that my middle son, Jack, is the most passionate human I know. At seven years old, I think he has peaked with the passion. Like, you watch. I'm going to show you. I could tell you about it. I'm going to show you. So this is my son, my seven-year-old son, Jack, at school. <laughs> Come on, look at that cutie. I think it's even cuter to note this is a robot competition at school. He's a nerd, and I love it. <laughs> there is an inner seven-year-old in all of us. We were all there once. Maybe we didn't have Jack's personality, but all of us can remember when we were kids when everything just felt so awesome. But then here we are, and insert your age here, sitting in a chair at Echo Church in 2022, and I think all of us can agree that there's a big gap to where we were and where we are. It's like if our life was a bucket of passion, there's been some leaks that have come along the way, and all of a sudden what was a full bucket, and it could be when we were a kid, it could be when we first got saved and met Jesus, we are finding that bucket's getting empty. 
And I'm not saying that to to bring condemnation today. I'm saying that to bring awareness that if we want to have a significant summer, if we want to be significant people that do significant things in our city, we have to figure out how to maintain our passion. So today I want to talk about, and I'm only just going to do one point before we finish up, how we lose our passion. And I think how we lose our passion primarily is one of the most destructive things that can happen to a human heart, is that we can be trapped in a place of apathy. Everyone say, boo, Boo. apathy. Apathy, I'm telling you, will rob you and rob I of all of the passion that we were called to carry in our life. Now, you might not know what apathy is, but our friend the dictionary will help us here. Apathy is an absence or suppression of passion, emotion, or excitement. It's a lack of interest in or concern for the things that others may find moving or exciting. As I said before, it's approaching life, including our faith, without intention. Life is just happening to us. We're not happening to life. Apathy is quite simply when we settle into complacency. We're happy to maintain rather than be hungry to grow. I'm preaching to myself this morning, I promise, just as much as you. Author Tim Keller is quoted as saying, apathy is a bigger problem than atheism for Christianity. Apathy is a bigger problem for Christianity than atheism. What is he actually saying? He's like, people that don't believe in God are probably closer to the things of God or encountering God than people that do know God and know everything he says and aren't doing anything with it. You know what a world finds really hard to believe? Somebody who says that they believe it but don't act like it. People that believe that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords chose to have a relationship with them, but their face doesn't reflect that, their life doesn't reflect that. Come on, that's what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable, that you would believe this, but nothing in your life has changed. Apathy is robbing us. It's robbing us in 2022. And I understand all the reasons why we can get apathetic, but that doesn't change the fact that we're called to address it this morning. An unknown author says, apathy always comes before calamity. Apathy always comes before calamity. And I'm sure you would agree with me. If we look at any issue in the world today, And you're going to be able to pull that thread back. At some point, somebody had gotten apathetic in the fight of truth. And when I read the book of Jude, he's imploring us. He's imploring you and he's imploring me. Come on, don't let the false teachers, the false narrative of what truth is, be taken out of the the hands of the Bible, be taken out of the hands of believers. We have to hold on to the truth. He literally says in Jude, I'm begging you. Hold on to the truth with everything you've got. Hold on to the passion you have for the Word of God and the truth that sets people free. Because without it, truth gets perverted. And we see some perversions that are happening in our country. And we can sit and we can lament what's being taught in schools or what's happening in our government. Insert issue that you might have here. But the truth is, before that happened, before that calamity is realised, somewhere along the lines, believers got apathetic and failed to take their place in the fight. It's plain speaking this morning, but come on, it's rude Jude. And I'm here to tell you, and I'm here to tell me, the time of apathy is done. We gotta step up to the fight. We were made for this. Come on, Goliath ain't gonna slay himself. Come on, we gotta pick up those stones and that sling. We can't just know about the story. We have to position ourselves for the story. Calamity will come if apathy is not addressed. So today, as we're talking about taking down apathy, I want you to attach it to the summer of significance that I prophesied over you to have. Apathetic people will really struggle to have significant things happen to them because they just don't care enough. I love passionate people because they just don't hear no. They just don't hear no. And I've loved that in myself. I feel like I'm never, I've never been more passionate than I am right now. And that has served me so well, church planning in a global pandemic, i got to tell you. Because, you know, we've had six venue changes. I have a city, like I could tell you some stories. We literally had a speakeasy church for like seven months. I'm telling you what that means. Like we closed the door and you had to have a special knock to come in because we, there's a whole thing that happened there. Like it has been a wild time. But you know what? It's been good for me because I had to put apathy aside and I had to pick up something, I had to put politeness aside, I had to put away consumer Christianity and I actually had to be a Christian. I know. It's been way too easy for way too long. And there's a famous quote that says this. It says, um, when, when good men rule, um, 
the next generation, I, I'm going to butcher this, like, just do it. But when good men rule, there's blessing that follows him. But when there's blessing, it actually makes space for apathetic people to rise. And when apathetic people lead, it actually then creates a space for evilness to rise. Like, it's actually a cycle that we go on in society. We have to. We've, we've, we've had way too many Goliaths slayed long ago, and we're not slaying our Goliaths today. And it means our kids don't know how to slay their own Goliath. They're apathetic. They're happy to coexist with the giants in their city, not realising that God has given us the solution. Come on, we are victors in this fight. So how do we take down apathy? There's a couple of things I want to say as we finish up. I think one of the key things is that we have to deal with the familiarity that we can get with miraculous things. You know, we sung a beautiful song up here today that this is a house of miracles. But the truth is we sing that song like we're at a karaoke bar. We're just saying the words. Like, do you really believe that Echo Church is a house of miracles? Do you really believe that? Because guess what? If you did, you'd live differently. If you really believe that you could bring your friends that are sick to church and they would be healed, come on, you would live differently. If you knew that you could bring lost friends and they could be found in the house of God, in the, in the arms of Jesus, you would live differently. I think it's really important that we, uh, we get rid of familiarity in our Christian life that leads to a place of dishonouring the things of God where we become disenfranchised, we become desensitised, the miraculous thing it is to be saved. You know, Pastor Andy was saying before, part of Pastor Andy and Christie's testimony is they had to step out of apathy into a place of passion to birth Echo Church. So I even just felt as you said that, this is just God multiplying your testimony. People are going to have that same experience you did six years ago today. God isn't calling you out this morning, church. He's calling you up. Apathy isn't serving you well. You weren't called to spectate the Christian life. You were called to engage in it. You were called to participate in it. You were called to be passionate in it. It's time to not be familiar with the things God hasn't called you to. Come on, familiarity will so easily um, end up in a place where you become dishonouring. And God can't move where there's dishonour about His presence. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible, you're going to find it in Luke. And I'm sorry, I haven't read enough scripture today, but it's all in there. It's okay, you can read the Bible for yourself. I know you can do it. Luke 18, he talks about, sorry, Mark 6. That's fake news, sorry. A prophet is not without honour, but in his own country and among his own kin and his own house. He's talking about when he was on the earth doing ministry, he was passionate. He's passionately going around and activating the power of Jesus in him. But when he came into his own place, people were so familiar with him. They'd seen him around before for many years. They'd seen him grow up. And it was in that place he couldn't actually do miraculous things. And I think for some of you, and I'm speaking to the veteran Christians in here today, you've been to too many church services, but you haven't been to enough encounters with God. You were not designed to spectate church on a Sunday. You were designed to participate in the Great Commission. You were designed to hold the passion of Jesus Christ. You know that's what the cross is called, the passion of Christ. When you look at the cross, it is literally the picture of passion that God so loved you that He gave His only Son. The very tenets of our Christian faith are, are, are impassioned. So when we have apathy, it is a direct contrast to what we say we believe. So I believe it to be so strong, Echo Church. And come on, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I didn't get to barely any of my notes today, but it actually doesn't matter because I know the Holy Spirit is speaking. I know He is. Come on, you're going to have a summer of significance if you can get rid of apathy and step into the passion you once had. Come on, it's time to return to your first love, Echo Church. For those that aren't yet in relationship with Jesus, it's time to say yes and get yourself positioned to have the power of Jesus come into you and do something amazing and then um, do it through you as well. God, I just declare right now where people, Father, have been apathetic, have gotten complacent, God, have gotten to a place of where their life is like a reflection of they don't care with what they know. I thank You that this is going to be a house that actually does something with the truth that they know, that when they read the Bible, when they worship Jesus, it isn't just lip service. No, God, it's a declaration of, of, of Your mission that You were designed to go into all the world, to go into all of Rochester, come on and make disciples. God, I just declare it. God, that there would be an impartation of passion in this house. 
God, that what happened in Pastor Christian and Andy six years ago would be realised in the hearts of people, God. God, that they can't take a city, all the prayers that they're praying can't happen, God, with apathetic people. God, I thank You this house will be known as a passionate house, Father. So Lord, I just thank You that Your Word has gone out. And God doesn't come to whip people in His Word, He comes to wash them in it. God, that You would give us the best kind of brainwashing, God, that You would clear out all the thoughts, all the mindsets, all the hardness, God, that hasn't served us so we can get into a place again, God, where we can be soft and receiving from You. God, I thank You. I say yes to everything that You've spoken, everything You've spoken. In Jesus' Name, in Jesus' Name. Just one last Scripture. It's very unlike me. I'm usually like a big Scripture reader. But you got me too passionate in here today. Oh, that happened. You know what? Last week I preached, I literally fell off the stage. So this is better than then. So this is what I want to read. I actually just feel to just pray for people that are disappointed. How many people would just say that they've grown a bit tired in their faith? That feel like the fight of faith has just left them really weary? Is there anyone like that? I want you to put your hand up. Come on, do it. Do it not to me. Do it to God. Put your hand up in expectation. Put your hand up position for transformation. I'm going to speak Galatians 6 verse 9 over you and it says, let us not grow weary. Come on, let's not become discouraged in doing good for at the proper time we will reap if we do not give in. God, I just pray for a quickening of harvest for those that are discouraged. Come on, the literal word courage is in there. The problem is, is this gets in the front of it. God, that this would move away so courage could be there in, in its place. God, that they would have the courage to be the passionate people that You have created them to be. God, I thank You right now that they would not make excuses. And I'm sorry, people have been through significant trauma and hurt. And God is sorry, but guess what? He's got something new for you today. It's not belittling that or not counting it. It's just telling you that, come on, a new is here. So it's time to put down the old, the old pain, the old hurt, the, the confusion. It's time to pick up something new in the things of God. God, I thank You. Disappointment right now is dissipating and courage is coming again. Passion is coming again. God, I thank You. So many testimonies of breakthrough are coming in Jesus' Name, in Jesus' Name. Can we thank Emma this morning? <laughs> Emma, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask that you just kind of park yourself right there. I'm going to ask a couple of our, our board members to place themselves throughout the room, if you don't mind, Doug and Debbie over here and Eric and Andrew over here. Christy, would you mind joining Emma? I just feel like uh, this is a house of prayer. This is a house of miracles. And as Emma speaks about apathy, I think we miss it if we don't ask you to make a move today. Some of you boldly raised your hand and that took a lot to do. But I feel like what the Lord is trying to uh, do today is... Uh, exercise your spiritual muscles by making a move. Isaac and Bree, you can pray right there too, if you don't mind. Uh, thank you. And, uh, and, and there are just phenomenal people that are placed throughout this church. And um, this isn't about you, but this is about being faithful with God calling you deeper. This is for some of you, some of your last rows of circling. And this is how we put up we put up the sails. This is the moment we've been waiting for, for the Holy Spirit to fill us anew and, and refresh us. And, and as the band here momentarily sings a song, I, what I want to do is, and, and you know what I've noticed with Echo Church, none of you really like to do this. You like to sit in your seat and you don't really want to step out, but I just sense that there's something significant. There's breakthrough waiting. And it really takes you to get up off your tushes and use those feet and approach one of these people, these beautiful couples to come and just pray over the, the spirit of the Lord to do something significant in you. Can, do you hear what I'm saying? Do you, do, you, do you hear or do you smell what you stepped in? Are you picking up what Emma put down? Let me just tell you this before this, uh, before we enter a moment of prayer. Uh, and Emma had made, just made reference to in two, uh, six years ago, um, I was in a ARC training 
church plant training thing because Christy and I were just exploring what does the Lord have for us. And, and man, God just smacked me on the side of the face and he, call, and he really called me out for being apathetic. And really, I felt like I stepped into an apathetic position in my life because I was simply just disappointed with the timeline that God had for me. Also, in my perspective and where I was supposed to be or where I wanted to be. And there's just some people in here, you're, you are just steeped in disappointment. Some of you are steeped in apath apathy. Some of you just need God to refresh you today. And that, guess what? These people are not sitting here just to be a fixture in the room, but there are to be really people who are going to reach out in collaboration with you, the Holy Spirit, to do something new and fresh to you. And I'll tell you what, we are seriously sitting here today because Christy and I left that conference and said, you know what, Lord, we are done with being apathetic. Well, and really, let me say this because I need it Google too. I looked up, it was a lack of concern. It was a lack of care. And you know what? That creeps in. And I just sense it could creep into this church and I just don't want it to be. And so can we just make this a place of prayer as we seek the Lord with our whole heart. So Jesus, today, we just come alongside what the Holy Spirit wants to do, what you have, have prepared for this very moment. And God, uh, as people are about to stand and about to worship, God, I just ask that you would give those same people that raise their hand the guts to step out of their seat and to come to one of these people. And God, to just seek you, to ask, to seek, and to pray. And Lord, would you show up in this very moment? Would this be a moment for this church that we would remember, God, this as a fingerprint in our heart and a fingerprint into our flesh and, and into our story? Story, God, that this was a moment that changed everything. This is the moment we put down the row, the rowing technique, and we just put our sails up. And Holy Spirit, you led us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, will you, will you stand up across this room? Will we seek the Lord? And again, would you step out no matter where you're at and seek the Lord and ask the Lord to do something into you today?
Dex, lead us here. Lord. We ask. Have your way in this place today, Lord. Touch every heart, Jesus. You are powerful, Lord. You are mighty, Lord. Yes, Jesus. across this room across this room will you just put your hands out like Callan did as a young man Jesus says in the Bible that we should have faith more like a child that even though you may not completely understand you're still in a position of receiving so all across this room just would you just spread your hands out wide as if someone is going to give you something today and, and Lord would you just move today Lord, would you just move today? We're in a place, in a position where we just don't want to play church anymore. We don't want to just go to church. We truly just want to be the church. And we want to be a church that is filled with your power. That God, that we can hear your voice and that we're faithful with the call and the position that you have put us in. God, I just sense that you're in the business of of cracking hard hearts today. God, soften our hearts. Soften our hearts. God, I soften our hearts. God, I just sense there's some people in here in this room you haven't cried for for years and years and years and, and you pride yourself for being a stoic individual and I just sense the spirit is trying to break something and give you something new and maybe that's the old thing you need to lay down today. I sense there's someone in here, you're visiting for Mayo Clinic, and you think you were here for Mayo Clinic, but actually you're here to receive a miracle from Jesus today. And Jesus, we pray that God, this, there's nothing significant about Mayo High School. What's significant is this, is when two or more gathered that you are in our presence and you are the great healer. You are the God that, that truly wants to make something that is old new once again. And we pray that that body is made new, that mind is made whole, God, and that there would be a miracle that happens today that would even astonish the Mayo doctors. We put our faith out there, God. You ask us to ask, and so we're doing that. We're doing that in an audacious manner. Lord, would you have your way? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Does anybody agree that God is good? Every week we pray a prayer, and that prayer is a reminder for those who are following Jesus that we cannot do life alone, but that we need Jesus and we 
need each other. Can I hear an amen? But this prayer is also a simple invitation for those that feel far from God to take a step towards God. And I believe old things are brought new again with simple surrender. It's really just admitting that we can't do this alone, that in our own power, like sin has a hold of us and Jesus is our only hope. He's our only answer. And and so I'm going to ask that this prayer goes on the screen and, and that this isn't just another repetitious prayer, but this is truly our request for the Lord to do something new in us today. So let us pray. Jesus, I surrender. I have more questions than answers, but I choose to follow you anyway. I acknowledge that you lived and you died and you rose again, all with us in mind. I accept the rescue that you offer. Save me and lead me in Jesus' name and his authority. Amen. Echo Church, can we celebrate with those that might have prayed that for the very first time? We'd love to connect with you if you did pray that. The the other group of individuals that we'd like to celebrate here today, maybe you came for the Lady League for the very first time last night, and just we were exposed to Echo Church, uh, but you came here this morning. We are so happy that you're here. Echo Church, can we celebrate our visitors today, our guests that came here? We would love to connect with you. You can do that out in the lobby.